Okay, well, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Kamika Kit Hopper. For those of you that don't know who I am, I am a faculty member in the biology department and I'm a member of CTLS, one of the co-chairs. And, you know, this is our third annual event that we've hosted. Uh, in the last two years, we've had it in person. So we've had, you know, cocktails and, and we've had food and we've been able to interact and engage with each other. And this year is, in the last year, as we know, it's just been different. Um, but uh, so, but we still wanted to have this event. I still felt it was very important to have the event just because you know where we are and I feel like we could all use the support from one another. So that's sort of our goal is to find ways to support each other and to learn about what some of your um, colleagues are doing. So I wanted to introduce, you know, we've got our um, CTLS, which is pretty much helping to run this as well as along with CET has been helping and Kristen is the chair of CET. So I wanna say thank you. And we've got EdTech um, and we have our crew. Um, thank you, James and all the, um, we've got, you know, Carla, we've got Adam, we've got um, Sammy, we've got um, Carl here to help us. And then we've also got faculty development, which is also part of CTLS is supporting this. And we've got Monica here. So I wanna say thank you um, to everyone coming together and helping put this, put this on as well as the faculty that we've asked to sort of be sort of the expert slash give your you know, feedback on what you've done in the classroom, albeit virtually or not. So um, just a few things for as a goal of this, of the mixer. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, share a couple slides with you, just so you kind of have a sense of where we're going with this today. All right, I'm gonna present. So hopefully you all can see this. So again, we're using this time to sort of reflect a little bit about what are some of the strategies we've done over the last year. Um, it's been a different year. So how did we sort of convert some of our in-person learning to in the classroom, I mean, on virtually? And so we're gonna talk a little bit about that and the hybrid practices that we typically, we typically use. All right, let's go to the next slide. So the event um, today is sort of set up to highlight some of those strategies. Uh, we've got a couple different um, showcases today. So this is a little different than we've done in the past. Um, through the graciousness, we've got two um, uh, 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 entities coming together. So Echo 360, we have Connor, um, he's here, and we also got um, uh, Proctorio, which is going to be Kelvin a little bit later. So we're showcasing a couple different programs that, as as St. Mary's has a license for, that you can start utilizing in the classroom. And Echo 360 is actually one of the newer ones, and I felt it was really important to be able to showcase that program, so you kind of know what you can use in sort of an asynchronous way with your students. And there's a lot of um, great um, tools with that program. So we're gonna do a little showcase on that. And then we're gonna go into our breakout sessions. And we've got faculty that are essentially aligned for each session that are there to kind of help and giving a little bit of feedback. One is gonna be on sort of synchronous as well as on asynchronous of teaching strategies. And then we'll move into another showcase on Proctorio. So for those of you that have, have or have not used a proctoring service, I know that's one of the things I've been using in the biology STEM field. Um, but it's a great way for you to know how to use it and just to sort of the strengths of it um, for your classes. And then we'll do the second breakout sessions, which is kind of learning how to use, we're a G Suite type of, 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 of college. Being able to know how to use that effectively in the classroom is really helpful. I know it's been useful for me, as well as some other academic assessment strategies that we've, um, we, we can use in the classroom that are sort of not the typical ones we would maybe use when we were in person. Um, and then we'll wrap it up and, and um, get any feedback or um, do any Q&A that you might have if you're able to stay till the end. So feel free to kind of come back and forth. Uh, one of the things that we we're allowing for now is Zoom. It's got this option of now you can join breakout rooms. So there's a way that you can go to your Zoom toolbar and you can kind of go in and hop between um, sessions. So as you can see, we've got our first two sessions and you know you can go back and forth between the two. Um, and then if we, we'll have a couple people in the main session. So if you're not sure how to get there, they should be able to help you get into that session. 
Okay, so this is sort of the, the breakdown that we have um, for today. Now, when it comes to the breakout sessions, I will just say that, you know, we have about 30 minutes. We try to keep this, you know, to, you know, compacted enough that, you know, we keep everyone's attention. So we've got 30 minutes. And my idea is that the faculty that have um, agreed to be able to kind of give us their feedback on approaches and strategies they've used, that they would give about three to five minutes um, of, you know, a little bit of who they are, what strategy they used, a little bit about why they used it, what they thought about it, would they use it again? Um, do they see themselves using it in the classroom? So it's just more of a teaser. And then the, the idea and the way I envision this is that we have a dialogue. So it's more of being able to just talk about what has worked in the classroom and just gain some sense of camaraderie, but also helping us to know, well, that would be a great strategy to try and giving examples as to how you used it. That's when I find it the most effective for me is when I can find someone tells me, oh, I use it this way. And I'm like, oh, okay, I can see that. That's really helpful. Um, and that's how I envision those sessions working. So that's kind of the idea and just monitoring the time, making sure everybody um, is able to like have a dialogue, ask questions. And then once that 30, 35 minutes is probably finished then we'll pull everyone back into the main session, have another sort of showcase and then we're gonna go into our next set of, of topics. So we'll see how it goes. This is kind of a, we're learning as we go along but hopefully you'll gain something from this. And we've got a lot of people that can give feedback, not only just the people that we've invited but many of you that are on this call um, have a lot of experience. And so I, I feel like we can all learn from, from each other and think about how we can convert this back to in-person learning since we're not, we're gonna actually have to do that come um, fall. If everything keeps going to plan that we would have in-person learning in the fall or majority of it, how can we take some of these strategies and put them into the classroom? And I think that's really, um, technology is here to stay and I'm definitely willing to keep it in my class even if it's in person. So I want everyone to sort of kind of think about that and use this time to, to talk with each other about it. Um, all right. So with that said, uh, there, there's two sessions that we have initially uh, before we get into Connor's presentation real quick. Um, I will say that we've got a synchronous teaching strategy session um, and then we have the asynchronous. And so right after um, Connor's presentation, I'll come back to this and I'll show you the different breakout rooms, and then you can kind of figure out where, where would you want to go? And then we're, we'll start those sessions then. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop my share. And I will then now turn it over to Connor so that he can do a, a sort of a presentation on Echo 360. Thanks, appreciate it, Kamika. My name is Connor Hardy, um, and I am my official title is Customer Success Manager I, for Echo 360. Um, been working with James, Carl, and Academic Technologies team over the past few months to set up Echo 360 in St. Mary's. We're a new platform, um, and so I want to just talk to you today about. I just kind of identified uh, two use cases that I think you could turn around today or tomorrow uh, and begin using in your class. And so I'll talk through those and I'll, I'll show you a little tutorial how to use them. Um, Echo 360, really, if I had to kind of sum it up in uh, just kind of one or two sentences, it's a video lecture capture um, platform that is also a content management system. And we're integrated nicely um, with the Moodle platform. And so um, I want to talk to you about these two use cases, which is um, the first one is auto ingesting all of your sessions, all of your Zoom sessions into Echo 360. You might say, why would you even want to do something like that? What would be the point? You know, I recorded on Zoom. Zoom is phenomenal. I use it every day, um, just like you do. Um, the area where it, it, it might potentially fall a little bit short for, your, for some of your needs might be in kind of that asynchronous format. Um, so when you have a bunch of content for, say, a semester, or how do students get to it, review it? How do you see if they're reviewing it? What if you need to edit it? What if you want to add in, you know, asynchronous kind of polling questions? Um, 
And what if you just want really robust analytics? That's where something like Echo 360 um, can really come into play. So I want to talk about how would you, we have a nice integration that Carl, James, and, and everyone, we, we worked on setting up where we can automatically ingest in um, uh, your Zoom sessions into Echo. So I want to show that. Um, and then I also want to talk through uploading videos into Echo 360. What if you have videos somewhere else? So you've made them in Camtasia or you make them with some other platform like Loom that you really like. How do you get them into Echo 360? Two really kind of simple things to do, but could really enhance your, your class. And so really the benefits here, I mean, there's a lot uh, of doing this stuff. I outlined some of them. You're going to get the really robust analytics here. Um, you can embed this stuff really nicely into your Moodle uh, course if you're using that a lot. Um, it could be a nice, you'll see a kind of one-stop shop for kind of reviewing content, right? There's so much content for all your students. They need to review stuff for a midterm or a final. Where do they go? How do they sift through it? This could be a helpful way of doing it. There's some good gated polling options here. I think in like an asynchronous course, you might want that gated polling scenario where, hey, you can't watch past say minute five in this video until you answer this question. So some of that, talked about some of the editing, video editing capabilities, really great searchable transcript too. I know you can get transcripts and stuff with all sorts of kind of video platforms, but the nice thing here is students can kind of come in, search for that specific term uh, that you mentioned in class back in January It'll pull it up to that point in the video. Those are some of the things you can do. Um, so, but those would be some of the benefits of, of, of these use cases. So um, let's let's unpack this a little bit. And we, as we talk through kind of an auto ingesting from Zoom and uh, Zoom and uploading videos, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here onto my screen and look at, at this platform. So um, Echo 360, there's a way to kind of access it in, uh, in your Moodle course, and I can go through that at another time. Um, I click on that Echo link, and it's gonna it's gonna actually open up um, an, an Echo 360 course here. Now, I just wanted to kind of show that it's kind of like the student workflow, right? They're gonna see a link in here, or Echo 360 or something. Click on it. Um, it could it would potentially open up um, this link. The nice thing here is you could list out all of your videos uh, for a specific course. Students can kind of go in. Um, and access them. So it could be a really great landing page. What I'm proposing you might want to do, a lot of you might be teaching with, Moodle, with uh, Zoom, is why don't you automatically pull in all of those sessions so students can come here to review them, okay? So the easiest way to do that, really actually the only way to do that, um, is click on that echo link in your Moodle course, go to account settings, go to Zoom settings here, and then you just toggle this on, right? Toggle to automatically copy all of your Zooms, Zoom recordings to your Echo 360 library. So if you teach a Tuesday, Thursday class, it will automatically pull that session uh, back into that uh, class that we were, that, that course that we were just in. So students could know to come here and review content. You can do all sorts of stuff with this. I just want you to see kind of what the viewing experience is like for a student here. Right, they would see the here's the zoom set here's the zoom session that occurred. I actually appended a PowerPoint as well here um, to this session that we could click through. And so it can be a great way to kind of review stuff. I talked about some of the kind of transcript capabilities that they um, type in any word that they're looking for. I typed in the word access. I got two results. I can go right to that point in the video. It could be really nice for a student for kind of reviewing stuff for class. So really easy. All you have to do is flip that toggle and you would pull all of that stuff in here uh, and students would be able to kind of review it. Conversely, you bring a video in, um, you have a slew of uh, capabilities with this video. If you go into edit details, not edit details. If you click on the video and go into details, um, you just get a, a robust set of things here where we can come in here. And I mentioned you can edit this media, right? So I can come in and edit out. Let's see, you have your Zoom session, you get off track in the middle of that for 20 minutes. You could come into this editing tool and we could clip out the middle 20 minutes. See in this video, I've already made a few clips um, to that video. So it could be a good little editing tool to have. Um, I mentioned some of the great analytics that you're oops, gotta get back into that. Um, let's go back here. 
Uh, I mentioned some of the great analytics that you're going to have as well there. Um, and so you're going to also kind of going back to this landing page. You got your analytics here. We can review. We can see what students have looked at, how long they've looked at it, uh, how many times they've looked at it. That could inform some of your instruction there when you see how much people are kind of engaging with your content. You can add those polling questions in like I talked about um, as well. Okay, so um, going back to this as well, the, the, the second workflow I just wanted to quickly show you as well. Maybe you don't have Zoom sessions that you want to pull in or anything like that, but you create your video somewhere else. How would you get that stuff in? Okay, uh, it's really a very similar, similar workflow here. You just go to the create option here at the top and you go into upload media. I'm actually going to do it this way. I'm going to create a new class, SMC demo one. I'm going to hit OK there. And then I am going to um, add video. I'm going to upload it in. And then I can come in and drag and drop any file in here that I like. Oops. Go and that will upload in. I'm not going to sit here and, and wait for it to upload in, but that's how you would uh, import it in. And I'll just kind of I'll pull in this one right now for, for demonstration purposes. So um, that's been loaded in. Um, good place to kind of store videos. I want to come back to kind of the Moodle piece as well, because I think once you have some of this content in there, you can also start kind of embedding it into your course. Um, I'm flying through a lot of stuff right now. If you want like a good understanding of how we're using Echo a lot at St. Mary's right now, um, business school is a great example as they're getting ready to roll out um, a number of uh, MBA courses and they're using this embedding tool that I'm about to show you real quickly here. Um, let me show you what it looks like right now. Here I've kind of uh, embedded this module in right here. And we see that this video sits nicely within um, the Moodle platform. And so um, I think we can watch this video. This is one I made it. And then I added in some polling questions there. They're going to need to answer that question um, before they progress. Um, it's a good way of kind of doing that gated polling. Of course, you're going to have access to some of your data analytics there as well. And so we can come in here, review kind of what content has been looked at. Um, but notice that it kind of embeds really nicely there um, into the Moodle platform. So another good option to uh, embed videos within pages. Um, I want to come back also. Uh, so, so we went over that. We talked about ingesting stuff from Zoom into Echo, what some of the benefits are there, uploading videos as well, um, uh, why you might want to do that, some of the benefits here with, with analytics. I also want to put this out there just kind of long term is this is something we want to kind of begin to explore with some St. Mary's faculty thinking about the fall piece right when you're kind of back in class. What is that going to look like, how would you even why would you even want to use echo 360 then and that's uh, another place where you can kind of hit the ground running. Um, is what we have the capable capability of doing with echo 360 as well is capturing a live stream of your class okay so you're. You're physically in class you have students in class we can capture that live stream um, and we can automatically post that live stream to the cloud to your moodle course um, for you um, and for students to access and review and so so students who might not be able to make it into class for some reason they could watch the live stream of your class um, or students who are reviewing for a midterm they could come and watch that class that you did uh, a few months ago so that's something to kind of think about um as you even that would be the benefit to getting comfortable with echo 360 right now is you can even um get a, a ton of benefit as well when you're back in person and you're using kind of the live live capture live stream option so i will wrap it there i you know i'm I know I work with James and everything, and we'd be more than happy to do like a follow-up session where we do a deep dive into how to use a lot of this. We're using it heavily in the business school right now, but um, I'll put a pause there and hopefully that whet your appetite a little bit for some of the Echo 360 stuff. Okay. Thank you, Connor. Um, I appreciate that. It's, you know, we have a, a couple of minutes. Did anyone have any questions for Connor in the short term? Because we're also going to have the asynchronous breakout session and Connor, are you going to be able to hop into that one? Yeah, definitely. I'll be around for that. Great. All right. So he'll be in that one too. But if anyone had any 
pressing questions right now. We have a minute or so that you could we could spend on that before we we break. Okay. Doesn't look like we do. Yeah. And I, oh, sorry, I always have one other thing for me. Uh, I, ju I just did um, a series of about four videos um, that I just finished editing. And it's really basic stuff that goes over everything we've just covered. Uh, how to access Echo for Moodle, um, how to upload a video, how to set up your, your uh, enable the Zoom Echo 360 integration. So all that stuff we just covered, they're all, all the videos are between one to two minutes long. So. Um, I'll make sure to work with James and Carl to, to ensure everybody here has access to this. Great. Thank you, Connor. Appreciate it. All right. So I think, you know, Connor will be around in the asynchronous breakout session. So, but before we get into those sessions, um, I want to say that Echo 360 was so gracious to allow um, a little bit of a raffle. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to turn it over to Kristen so she can explain how to, if you want, if you're interested in um, putting your name in the hat for a $75 gift card. Um, she's going to share a Google form with you and kind of walk you through what you need to do. And then you will be, you'll be notified. So Kristen. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, we have two $75 gift cards to give away courtesy of Echo 360. And I felt like the easiest way to do this was with a Google form. So it's in the chat right now. Um, and if you click on that form, it's really simple. You just need to enter your name and email address. And what I'm going to do is turn this into a learning opportunity and share my screen in a minute <laughs> and show you a quick trick for, you know, randomizing groups. And I don't know if you all do this in class ever. You want to choose, choose students randomly or randomize a list of students at the beginning of class so that you can call on them randomly during class. Um, I do this pretty much every day. So I'll give you guys maybe one more minute to put your names in there. Maybe as they're going in, I'm, I'm assuming that everybody in this group doesn't care if their name is shared. These were student names, I wouldn't be so careful. I would be more careful rather. Um, so this is the, this is the Google um, form that I just used to collect your information. I imagine most of you have used one of these in the past. Uh, the responses you can get by clicking on the responses tab, but the the best way, I think, in my opinion, to handle um, data that comes from a Google form is with a spreadsheet. So if you create a new spreadsheet, it'll create a Google sheet, it'll open it for you in the browser. And uh, we have a spreadsheet of everyone that's filled out the form so far. And this is live. So if anybody else puts their name in the hat, we'll be able to see it there. Um, assuming that everybody's data is in, I can't really tell how many people are in this meeting. but. We'll assume all the data is in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab the list of names, copy them and put them in a new page so I don't destroy the original data. And then just randomize, I'm gonna randomize the range and then the top two people will be the winners. So we can do this by clicking randomize range. So it looks like Marguerite and Jan are the winners. Congratulations. Uh, and we'll be Cute. contacting you for the details. Awesome. Thanks, Kristen. That's pretty, um, pretty straightforward and how to randomize it and get students involved in class too. So that's a good way to do it. Um, all right. Well, we've got, um, we've done our showcase. Now we're going to do our breakout sessions. So a few things just to make sure we're all on the same page on that. And I wanted to just share my screen again, uh, just so that you are aware of the sessions uh, and what they're going to go over. So there's two sessions that we're gonna go over right now. Um, one is on synchronous. So I've gone ahead and put some of the faculty that we've asked to be involved in that session. And these are just sort of a, a rundown of some of the topics that we've sort of thought would be useful for a discussion. So faculty will, again, walk through a little bit about how they used it, you know, and then of course, open up a dialogue as to how we actually did use it in the class, what we thought, what would we keep, what would we not keep, and so this is going to be the synchronous session. So I just wanted to give you a, a way to kind of let your eyes sort of scroll through some of the topics. It's not exhaustive. There could be other things that may be on the, that may not be on this list that you may want to talk about. But that's where I feel like the dialogue comes in in having that sort of discussion in those sessions. So this is on synchronous, and I think you know it kind of brings in a lot of different elements. So the Zoom, 
Um, but of course, when we think about how to use like more of a flipped classroom, um, you know, guest speakers, as well as how do we structure class discussions. Um, and then the asynchronous teaching strategy is a little bit different where, you know, we've got some faculty and staff that are here to give you their sort of information about how they've used some of these strategies in their classes. And again, it's not exhaustive, but it's one of those where if you, you know, have something to say and if you want to add to the conversation, this is a great time to do it. Um, one of the great things is we've also got um, the library. So we've got Gina Lee um, here um, being able to talk a little bit about how we can utilize the library for a lot of our classes, which so maybe depending on some faculty, we sort of forget on how we can streamline those um, different pro the different um, options that the library does give. So we've got different um, parts here that you can kind of kind of um, dabble in and see where where you might um, find most interesting. So these are the two sessions that we have going on right now. And uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. And I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and um, move everyone into the breakout rooms wherever you wanna go. So um, once we do that, then we'll have about 30 minutes and then we'll come back out and we'll do another showcase. <laughs>